We're gonna talk about how to throw the discus and we're gonna go step by step, but you gotta learn this first. Check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson, and in today's video, we are going to be setting up for a four-part training series on how to throw the discus step-by-step. Step. Now, one of the things we always talk about is the discus happens extremely fast, and one of the challenges that we talked about in our recent video was you gotta see the throw, you gotta understand the throw, and then you have to be able to identify what makes it difficult. So that's gonna be, can you see it? Do you actually understand it? Did you learn it right? Do you have strength problems? And what combination of those things are limiting your ability to throw? Right now, I'm gonna take you through a quick clip on one of our terminology videos videos as we go into this four part series, today being part one, next video being part two, setting up the chain reaction and setting up maximum power in your throw. So it's gonna be really important to understand our core terminology in learning and throw. So if this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, check out the long list of videos that we've designed for coaches and throwers to help you understand and learn a little bit more about the throwing chain reaction system, our six pillar system for being able to see, understand and learn the throw for fast improvement and big throws. Let's check out the terminology. First thing that we like to talk about is we're gonna be communicating direction. 12 o'clock is the beginning of the throw. Six o'clock is directly the dead center of the sector. Therefore, this is three o'clock and this is nine o'clock. So the clock is gonna be real simple. So when you hear me refer to 12, six, nine, three, eight, whatever, that's the clock we're referring to. Simply separation refers to the shoulder and the hips separating. Notice my hips are gonna stay forward here at six o'clock and my shoulders right now are trying to turn over here to nine o'clock without my hips moving and then in the discus so if i was in the shot i'd be separated in the discus we have two types of separation shoulders hips arm shoulder so you're going to notice how my arm kind of disappears and stretch reflex is when i separate and you see my body kind of sling back so basically what that means is it's the longest point of when a muscle stretches and it reflexively contracts and that's a very fast motion the radius refers to the length of the implement or especially in the discus how far is your arm right the big radius you got to have a big radius you want the arm as far away from possible so the distance from my hand to my thigh is shorter the distance from my hand to my thigh is longer the longer the radius the further you throw so that's going to be important now the radius ties into what we refer to as the orbit and the orbit is where the path of the discus is moving you see how it's kind of moving across so this is what we would refer to the high point as we would come around the throw the discus would kind of come down and then as we turn it hits this is the high point of the throw but notice the orbit so we're gonna have high low high and then out around and delivery we have a high point in the discus as I just mentioned and that's the high point here this is really critical so as we hit to the power position we're gonna be able to come around this way okay people talk about this right they want to turn the foot like this and a lot of people turn to teach turn the foot now you're gonna notice that my hips are still facing a little bit this way and they turn so when I pivot my hips do turn but a lot of times people pivot and kind of hit their hips and notice where my hips kind of stop now notice when I push my heel up and I'm gonna push the knee and then turn, notice how I've turned my hips a lot more and I have a lot more ground contact. And so when we rotate in the rotational throws, the axis is from the hip to the foot, okay? And you're gonna notice when I'm here and that's what's gonna make me rotate this way. And then we have another axis in the center and it's gonna be really important to be lined up on the axis so we're gonna be able to come through. Opening is always gonna to refer to as going into Towards the direction of the throw. Staying closed is gonna be staying back. And in the throwing chain reaction, we refer to the power position as pillars five and, five and six. We wanna lock down maximum power and we wanna then work into delivery so we can hit the big finish. Power position is when you're over the delivery leg, which is another term, and then we're gonna be setting up our block leg. So the center of mass is going to be this rectangle from my hips to my shoulders this rectangle we can't have the rectangle moving around so now we're going to talk about the sweep and the sweep is is usually going to refer to the right leg which turns into the delivery leg so at this phase of the throw pillar one two three the sweep leg comes out wide in a nice rotational path then we will transition to the middle, which is gonna be our pillar four. And then as I come in, that sweep leg becomes the delivery leg. Now, the next thing is we talked earlier about sprinting. This is the entry leg, sprint leg, 
balance arm, okay? So entry arm, we refer to it at that. So the sprint leg balance entry arm is at this phase, which is pillar one, two, three. As we go to four, that sprint leg becomes the block leg and now the arm turns into the block arm. So now the last thing we're gonna talk about is the reverse. I drive my delivery side all the way through the block and I come through my feet switch. So some people call it the switch, we call it the reverse. And then we have what we call as the non-reverse. Those are throw specific terms like I, made the example before, it's like football. What's a sideline, what's a yard, what's a touchdown, what's a goal line, these are basic things. This is your basic terminology for throwing. Okay guys, so welcome back. We wanna be able to understand throw. Sometimes people have different terminology. Most of that is just kind of core throws terminology. It's throws 101, but when we've done camps virtually live, we'll get half of the people in attendance raising their hand, stating they don't understand some of those basic terms. So that's why it's gonna be really important. So now now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just show you real quick what we're gonna look at here. So we're gonna see our athletes setting up. And again, you're gonna notice Sandra Perkovich. We've got separation. She's got, you know, here's the hips are facing this way. Shoulders are facing that way. Discus is way back. You're gonna notice our, you know, younger throwers here that are learning system, great separation on the younger athlete here. Here's a high school athlete that was, you know, learning to put everything together. And so we have, where's our high point? Notice Perkovich's discus up here. So we've got the high point there. Again, notice our younger thrower's got the high point a little too low. So where's our entry arm? And where's our orbit, right? So now we've got the discus dropping into the low point, low point, low point. We've got, do we have the longest radius where we have that arm back and we've got a long radius here. We're looking at our entry side. So now you're going to start to see how all that terminology plays into your throw. Seems like a basic video, but it's not. It's really critical so that way you can continue to move forward. Remember, one of the big keys to being able to throw farther faster is to be able to understand these basic things. Therefore, it's easier to start getting into the complex stuff that we're going to actually make a lot easier. The throw really Really is simple there's a lot of complexity to it and I know that sounds like a contradiction but the point is you want to simplify the complexity and that's what we're trying to do so once we're clear on those basic terms we're gonna be able to really dive in so in our next video what we're gonna focus on like I said is setting up the chain reaction and setting up maximum power we're gonna look at pillars one and two we're gonna look at beginners top US ranked throwers and we're gonna look at the best throwers in the world and we're gonna kind of look at how everybody is approaching that pillar one two and you you'll see the difference that what takes a throw from a beginner at two seconds to what takes it to a second and a half by the best throwers in the world. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next video. So if you guys would like more information in the meantime, be sure to check the link in the description on the Throwing Chain Reaction system. We got tons of information in there for those of you that really wanna dive in. So do that now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you on the next video.